Muy buenos días a todos los que en esta ocasión se encuentran allí con el misionero Miguel Bermúdez Marín y su esposa. Ruth. Good morning to all who are on this occasion there with the missionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín and his wife Ruth and all those who accompany him in the congregation pastor by the Reverend Patricio Lara there in La Florida, Chile at this breakfast they're having today, Saturday, October 28th of this year, 2023. It is a privilege and blessing for me to be able to send this greeting to all of you there and ask God for his blessings upon each and every one of you and upon all those who will be listening to these words. and also to those who are through the satellite Amazonas or Internet on this occasion. You may please be seated. We are living, as our brother Miguel was telling us yesterday, in the stage of the spoken word. When he spoke that phrase, I wrote it. I wrote it down in the stage of the spoken word because the third pool is the word being spoken and we have been seeing these days how God has been showing us in which and what things we must be fixing besides the one we have already fixed, we are getting close to a stage in which the people must be completely ready. And all of that is possible by means of the word being spoken. And we have seen that we are in a time parallel to the time in which our brother William spoke to us in that message that he titled God Judges the Heart and then that was in December then in January he preaches to us the message the nature of the children of God and notice that that message speaks to us something here which I want to share with you, which he tells us. Now, let us see the hour we are in and the problems which you see that emerge, we will confront them. Whether they are yours or of a brother or sister, we will face them so that the devil does not take pleasure in doing whatever he wants or abusing of our beloved brethren. We are going to face it at this hour because victory is for the children of God because they are the overcomers. So, I believe that you have been maturing and I believe that you will mature more. What could cause you to turn away from the message of this perfect age? What could then cause you at this hour to stop listening to what God has for you? Angels? Persecutions? Death? Scandals? There can be nothing. You are a predestinated seed. And we are arriving. We are arriving at the place where we came from. Therefore, then brethren, continue forward in everything. There will always be things that if you're not holding on tight to the word, you will place your hands on your head. It's like when someone says, oh my, and you put your hands on your head. But place them on your heart. Do you see? We want to help at this hour. And the Lord wants to help his whole people, no matter the condition in which you are. And this hour, I also repeat those words because it is the hour we are approaching to that full manifestation of the power of God. 
But the people must be prepared, must be ready. And thank God. Thank God that He gives us this time. He is looking at the condition you will be in and how He will take you out of this condition you are in. I think that the Lord is moving in a marvelous way, speaking to us in love, but in divine love. And since divine love is corrective, what we talked about yesterday, well, He's not hiding our faults from us. He's letting us see them, but He's also showing us the solution for them. He's not showing us the faults and telling us that we're going to hell. He's showing us the faults and telling us how to solve them and where we are going. See? So, forward, beloved brethren. Now, any brethren that has been grabbed by the devil's dimension because the devil takes hold of someone and makes him act incorrectly. Well, who took hold of him? Well, the fifth dimension took hold of him. But do you know something? When the Lord went away, he left the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Did you know that? But did you know that when the Lord resurrected, he took the keys of hell and death? And he did not leave them here, but he took them with him. And when he comes back, does he come with them? Notice, that is something very important. That is why, by having them at his second coming, then he can bring with him those who are in the sepulcher, because he can open the sepulcher, because he has the key for that. See, he also has the key to hell. Any chosen one that is caught by the fifth dimension, he can take him out, just as he can also cast any child of the devil over there. He can also take out any chosen one that is caught by the fifth dimension. Notice, to the chosen one, he's showing them by the word what they are doing wrong. And it is not to cast them into hell. But notice, that since he has the keys to hell and death, he can also, just as he can take a chosen one out of there, he can also cast in those who do not welcome him and will not welcome him in this end time. He goes on to say, So, he has the key to the kingdom of the heavens. He has the keys to hell and death. So, there is no problem. That is why he can bring the resurrection. Because in order to rise the dead, well, he has to have the keys to the sepulcher. That is why he says that the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and they will rise. And he writes there on the on that scripture, on John chapter 5, on that part there, he says, where it says that, he writes, in flesh, that is, in human flesh, he will speak that word, because he has the keys to the sepulcher. He has the keys, and thus can bring to resurrection the dead. He says, he has to have the key of death, and the Lord took them from the devil, and of hell also of the fifth dimension, so there is no problem. And of the sixth, he will have them. Mm -hmm. So there are no problems in this hour in which we live. So the victory is bigger than we can imagine. And notice in this message, Hebrews chapter 5 and 6, number 1, It tells us on paragraph 118, it says, By the Holy Spirit baptism, we are baptized into that body and are free from sin. God don't see you no more. He only sees Christ. And when you're in that body, God can't judge that body. He already judged it. He took our judgments and invited us in. And by faith, Through grace, we walk and accept our pardoning, and the Holy Spirit brings us into this fellowship with Him, and He draws a star of David on both sides. 
And at the top he had also drawn a cornerstone and the ages, and two stars of David as well. And we walk no more after the things of the world, but we walk in the Spirit. Quicken. He died in my stead, I'm made alive. And there he draws another star of David. Here I am, who was once dead in sin and trespasses, being made alive. All my desires is to serve him. All my love is to him. All my walk want to be in his name. That whatever I go, whatever I do, I glorify him. If I'm hunting, if I'm fishing, if I'm playing ball, if I'm whatever I'm doing, I must be Christ in me. There he also draws a star of David in such a life that will make man long to be that way. Not tattling, backbiting, and fussing about your churches. Do you get it? By one spirit, we are baptized in that body. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. And there he draws a star of David and also a cornerstone in the ages. Listen, let's read just a little further here, please. What could never make the comer into perfect? For the second verse, the 10th chapter, for then they would not have ceased to be offered. If that could make the person perfect, and God requires perfection, if keeping the laws, if doing all the commandments would make you perfect, then there's no need of having anything else. You're already made perfect. Because when you're perfect, you're eternal. Because God is the only one is eternal. And God is the only one perfect. And the only way you can be eternal is becoming part of God. And there he draws a star of David, and he writes, He who is perfect is eternal. And he also drawn a pyramid, and inside he wrote 50. And next to it, number 8, which is eternal age. And at the bottom of the ages, and 49. He writes there 49. That is that, up to 49, he places that number up to the seventh age. Now notice on front, he also writes, when you're perfect, you're eternal. And notice what he goes on saying here in the message we are reading. It says, so, The victory is bigger than we can all imagine. So, we do not want to cast anyone to the fifth, and much less to the chosen ones. Rather, whoever is caught in something by the fifth, let him see that he was caught by the fifth, and let him recognize it, and show him how to get out of there. See, why? Because the one that has to catch us is the sixth, and she is coming to take us. We cannot let any chosen one be taken by the fifth. The world is taken by the fifth dimension, but the chosen people are being taken by the sixth dimension, the dimension of the Word. Do you see why it is through the Word, which is doing that work in each elect, but it is also through the Word that a person can be cast in there who does not welcome the Lord and is not of the chosen ones. Now, they may say, but by what authority does he come now to say that? Who is the one that is speaking these things? Notice. In the message, reverential fear, that I have been reading these days, there is a part that he quotes on page 139 in the Book of the Seals. And there at the end, he tells us something, which I want to read that excerpt, that little piece that he read. And continue there with the part he commented and said, speaking about that part, says, Seals, page 139, it says, 
But think now, he wrote this. But when he started to write those others, Seven Thunders, he said, don't write it. He had been commissioned to write everything he had seen. But when these Seven Thunders over in Revelation 10 uttered, he said, don't write them at all. These are mysteries. We don't know what they are yet. But my opinion, they'll be revealed right away. And when he do, you'll give faith for that rapturing grace for that church to move out. There you have it. Brother William says, and he continues reading, we've just moved through everything that we know of, through all the dispensations. We've watched everything. We've seen the mysteries of God. We've seen the appearing of the great gathering together of the bride in the last days. But yet, there is something in there that we just can't lighten ourselves with. There is something other. But I imagine when the mysteries begin to come forth, God said, hold it back now, wait a minute, I'll reveal it in that day. Don't write it at all, John, because they'll stagger over it. Just let it go, see? But I'll reveal it in that day when it has need to be done. They never uttered for nothing. Remember, like the drop of ink, everything is for a purpose. Everything is for a cause. But notice, the Creator uttered. And Brother William makes the comment there and says, Who is it? Who is the one who pronounces the thunders? The Creator. It is the voice of the Creator. And who is it that is uttering the thunders in this end time? In the great tent cathedral? It is the Creator. It is the voice of the Creator that is speaking directly to our souls, directly to our hearts. But notice, the Creator uttered, and He heard this voice and He went to see. But now the Lamb is showing John in the symbols of a church scripture, like for the church to know what to write. He just show him, said, now, don't, don't tell this, just what it is. Don't go down, John, and say, now, this is just what this is, of what's under this seventh seal. Don't, don't go down and tell that. For if I tell John that, Then all down through the age, the whole plan will be broke. It's a secret, see? He's coming. He said, now. And nobody's going to know when I'm coming. I'm just coming, see, see? That's all. It ain't for my business to know when. I'll just be ready, you see? And Brother William says, now notice why it was not open to the public. Why God did not allow it to be written. Because it would spoil the whole plan of the ages. So... When we see that the seventh seal has a very, very special purpose, and that special purpose of God for us is that He will give us the faith for the rapture, will prepare us. Notice, God's purpose for which there was silence in heaven for about the space of half an hour, and why those thunders were not written, was because if it became known at that time, it would spoil the whole plan, the whole plan of the ages. Now, look at the very, very special purpose, which comes from God, which comes from the voice of the Creator. It is to give us the rapturing faith. He will prepare us for that rapturing faith. And that is what God is doing, preparing us in this end time to obtain that rapturing faith. And we are obtaining it. We are obtaining everything we need to go in the rapture. Now notice what he keeps saying in this message. God is identified by his characteristics. Paragraph 144 to 146. He says, Heavenly Father, we're just men and women sitting here tonight. But we are, as it was, handling God when we handle the Word. Because God is Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that Word was made flesh. Notice, it's the Creator. And Father, I'll be afraid to try to say something that wasn't in here. I'd be afraid to try to put my own interpretation to it, because it might be wrong. And you said, whosoever shall take one word out of it, or add one word to it, his part will be taken from the Book of Life. What good would my life be then? Brother Ranham says that there. And I repeat that 
on this occasion. If I know that's how it is, what good would my life be if I am adding to it or taking away from it? But since it is the voice of the Creator, this is thus saith the Lord. And Brother Branham goes on to say, What good would my life be then, Lord, if I do an evil thing like that? So, I just speak it the way it is. And Father, you promised that you would identify it. I believe that you are risen from the dead 2,000 years ago and are alive tonight, calling a simple people, just as you've always did, one here and one there, no groups, no organization, no great manner of what man had done. But you said you would take a people out of the Gentile, a people. Two in a field, I leave one, take one. Two in a bed, I leave one, take one. A people here and there, for your name's sake, the bride. I believe that your character identifies you. There he writes on front of it, God's character identifies him. Now notice, at this, such an important part here, of what the word is in the third pool. And who is that word? Who is that voice? It's the voice of the Creator. And now to finish, here this part of the message that we are reading from the nature of the children of God. He says there, We cannot let any chosen one to be taken by the fifth. The world is being taken over by the fifth dimension, but the chosen people of God are taken by the sixth dimension, the dimension of the Word. That's why the Word is empowering us. It is becoming incarnate in us. What is it? The sixth dimension. And the key of the sixth dimension, the revelation of the Word, the key, well, imagine, has to be present for that Word to be incarnate in us. That key of the sixth dimension has to be in the midst of the people. That key of the dimension of the Word has to be in the midst of the people to bring us closer and gather us to go to the place where we have come from. The stage, or at the stage of the spoken word. It was the subject that Brother Miguel spoke about yesterday, that phrase. And we can use it in these words for this occasion, at the stage of the spoken word. And to all of you who are listening to me on this occasion, May God bless you and may God keep you. And I believe, Brother Miguel, that these words can be placed in the meeting that you will have later on, there with the ministers and all the brethren, and all those who will be connected. So these same words can be placed in that activity that you will have later on. And I reiterate my greetings to all the brethren there, to our brother, Reverend Patricio Lara, his wife, Selvi, their children, all the family, and all the brethren who make possible all these beautiful activities there, in which, when I have been there, I had a very but very good time, with so much love they do and prepare, both the sisters in the kitchen as well as those who do the cleaning, prepare the tables, prepare the arrangements. In short, all those who make possible this beautiful activity that they are having there, and also the next one and in all other places as well. All the sisters who whole heartedly and with love prepare everything and have done it while our brother William was here and now also continue doing it with our brother Miguel. May God bless you greatly and bless them all greatly too and reward them spiritually and materially as well. May God bless you all greatly and be praying as our brother Miguel spoke to us yesterday and we have seen in the news what happened to that area there in Acapulco and all those places around there. And in whatever we can help, we will also be hand in hand with the brethren there in Acapulco and its surroundings. May God bless you greatly and may you be restored and everything recovered. The important thing is that you are alive and well and everything else is just an add-on. But we will be hand-in-hand hand with them helping them. 
and reminding them that there will come a very but very difficult time where the only escape will be to live this planet Earth in the rapture. And for that is the voice of the Creator, the voice of the Word being spoken, the voice in this glorious stage, at the stage of the spoken Word. At the stage of the spoken word. May God bless you and keep you all. And continue having a happy day filled with the blessings of God.